All right, sorry, yeah, the internet went out. So we are able to get it back now. Right, so here, so we, we are, what we are trying to do is we are trying to prove that natural numbers is not bounded above. So I am trying to prove it by the contradiction. So I take n has a supremum, and I assume n is bounded above. So by completeness I see it will have a supremum namely u. So obviously u will be and uh, so greater or equal to n for all n belongs to natural number. Right. Right. When we start talking about natural numbers, we define something called inductive set, right? So we say that n is basically, uh, uh, sorry, this thing, huh? right? So we say that this n is an inductive set, right? So if this n is an inductive set, right? So if u is greater or equal to n, then you know that it is true for n plus 1 as well, right? Because you know that it is true for, if it is true for n and if it is an inductive set, you know it is true for n plus 1 as well. So that implies u is greater than or equal to n plus 1, right? So u is greater or equal to n plus 1. So that is because of the inductive set, right? So this means u minus one is greater or equal to n for all n belongs to natural number. Right? So you start with u being a supremum. So because of that, u is greater or equal to n for all n, but n is an inductive set. So obviously it is true for n plus one as well. So u is greater than n plus one. So if you rearrange that, you get u minus one is greater or equal to n for all n. So this says, the last line says, u minus one The last line says, u minus one is a This tells me u minus the so u minus one is an upper bound of n, right? U minus one is an upper bound of n. But you all know you say that u should be the supremum. So u minus one is also an upper bound, but supremum is the least upper bound. So, u is a supremum, but you show that u minus 1 is also an upper bound. So, supremum must be the least upper bound. So, u must be less or equal to u minus 1. So, you all know that this is not possible, right? Some number is smaller than, one less than that number will never happen, right? In any numbers, right? When you read, reduce one from a number, right, obviously it will be smaller than the previous one. It cannot be greater than the previous one, right? So this is clearly a contradiction. This is a contradiction. So if this is a contradiction, then what you assume is wrong. Right? So what you assume is n is a bounded about set. Right? The set n is bounded about. That is wrong. So then so 
so hence it is not bounded okay so this is how we prove that the set of natural set of all natural numbers n is not bounded above but clearly you know it is bounded below and right? because every number in the natural number set is greater or equal to 1 so clearly it is bounded below but not bounded above right so now what we are going to do is to we are going to define or we are going to characterize the supremum in a different way now right? so this is called Right, so we are going to characterize the supremum in a different way. Right? So you defer, remember when we start defining the supremum, right? So we say that supremum is the least upper bound. Right? And then what we do, we use some mathematical notations, inequality notations, to define supremum. We say that uh, if u is the supremum then u will be greater or equal to all the elements in the set and any other so upper bound will be bigger than the set, right? So that is how we define supremum there, right? So from the original definition, we characterize supremum by using the inequality notation. So here, we are going to define the infinitesimal characterization of the supremum, right? So let me introduce this. I'm going to use this notation, right? So this is called right. So we define a notation called epsilon, right? So this is a Greek letter epsilon, right? So we are using this. Right, so we shall use epsilon, right, to choose it as small as we please, right. So epsilon is a positive number, right. Actually, epsilon is a positive number, but you can choose as small as you can, right. So that is the idea of supremum, right. So that is. So what we are going to do here is, you know that so you know that when you have a set S like this, right, you have upper bounds here, right, and then supremum this is the supremum, right, and then what we say by supremum is supremum is the least upper bound so that means if you come a little down from supremum right if you go little less than supremum right somewhere here right you can get at least one element between right so this 
value something below supremum we name it as u minus epsilon right so you go epsilon distance below u right and that epsilon can be made as small as we can right so very close to zero right very close to zero but still positive right not zero but it can be made as small as possible right so by using this epsilon notation we are going to define the supremum property right so let me define it first okay so i will write it as a lemma here okay so this thing is non empty s is a subset of r and do belongs to r b supremus right so basically this right so that is u is equal to so these are the things we already defined right s p and n p subset of real numbers and it is bounded above so clearly it will have a supremum so let u be the supremum of it right so okay so we write this in mathematical notation if u is the supremum of s right so clearly u is the upper bound that is the first statement so that is always there so u is greater or equal to x for all x in s right and then for every epsilon positive right when you go epsilon below u right there will be some element in the set s right so for every epsilon positive there are x is an x not belongs to s such that u minus epsilon is smaller than x not right so in this picture right here u is the supremum and you go epsilon below so you will get an x not in between right so you can choose epsilon very close to zero right but still you will find at least one x not in between right so we shall prove this right so now we don't have enough time to prove this it is a little bit lengthy proof so i will prove the statement in the next class and then uh, we will do a few more exercises on supremum and infimum and f right so we will stop here and then i will continue tomorrow at one.